thank you for coming this morning to this session, to this symposium on service learning to discuss on the future of higher education institutions. Uh, in this symposium, we will have four presentations. Uh, the first one, uh, I will be the presenter and I will introduce what service learning is and I'll present a review, a systematic review on service learning and social justice. Then we will have a Florence experience and Cristina Cecchini will be the presenter and a Portuguese experience of service learning where Catarina Rivero is going to present and the last uh, Paduan experience of service learning with mentoring and Marisa Bergamin will present. So the first, um, the first presentation is about the, the systematic review. And before introducing uh, the theme of the presentation, I would like to briefly summarize uh, the major points of service learning and the foundational concepts. Uh, for those who are not very familiar, but I think that more or less we all know what service learning is. Anyway, service learning um, is based on community engagement. So we are in the right room since we are in the engagement room and basically entails uh, that students um, meet the community outside of the university through an experiential learning experience. And this is intended to be part of their academic training. The project that is made needs to be relevant both for the students' curricula and also for the community needs, since um, the project is built, co-created with the community to answer their needs and the students' needs of learning. Then we have respect in the sense that community knowledge needs to be valued, respected and integrated, uh, both uh, integrated in the sense that university can add something going outside the academia, but also that community can teach academia something. Then another foundational pillar is reflection, since reflection is an ongoing process that guides the students, but also the academic members and the community partners and community members to really understand what is going on and what um, students learn, but also what community learn from this experience, this exchange. And talking about exchange, another foundational pillar is reciprocity, since uh, this um, experience can generate uh, new experiences. So we have uh, unified generativity in the sense that um, from this interaction, something new is created, like new projects, new services, new, um, new tools. And also, uh, it can be a reciprocal influence in the sense that, as I said before, the, the knowledge that is contaminated brings something new for the university and also for the community or they can have a mutual exchange. So um, they exchange basically resources. Then talking about the topic of this presentation, we know that service learning has many outcomes uh, on the different actors that are involved. So on students, on academic members, on community partners, and also community members. And among other outcomes like critical thinking, social responsibility and academic commitment for students, service learning has been proven to effectively support students' reflection and understanding of social justice and change also their perspective on the marginalized groups through the direct engagement with the community. And findings show that service learning also fosters students social justice oriented beliefs and attitudes, social justice oriented behavior and their level of awareness of social inequalities within the communities. 
However, literature also highlights that poorly structured service learning can reinforce stereotypes and fail to uncover the root causes of inequality. So given that these results seems to be conflicted and all the, um, all the reflection that has been made on the way the uh, research is conducted when it comes to service learning, we wanted to understand what really is connected to social justice when we're talking about service learning. And we realized that there were not very clear understanding of this. And so we decided to make a systematic review to answer major, these three major questions. So what are the characteristics of these studies? Which are the target communities uh, when service learning in social justice is made? And what outcomes are associated? We follow the PRISMA uh, protocols uh, to conduct the systematic review. And we started from uh, a quite good number of uh, articles. And then we started to remove the duplicates and also exclude all the papers that do not follow the, fell under the, um, uh, the inclusion criteria. So that were not published, uh, written in Spanish or non peer reviewed. And then we decided to focus only on empirical studies. Uh, we also found some essays and reflective paper, but we decided that we really wanted to understand through empirical studies how it is, how this two, how the service learning experience is connected to social justice. Anyway, at the end, we arrived with 47 um, articles. And uh, what we found out, we found out that the major methodology was the qualitative one. And some of the articles were also quantitative and mixed method, but it reinforced the, uh, all the findings that said that majorly um, when it comes to service learning, qualitative uh, methodology and approach is preferred over other. Then that the majority of articles was published uh, in the educational field. We also had some um, papers from psychologists and even from community psychologists, uh, but the major uh, discipline was education. And that most of the studies, despite these methodologies spread worldwide, uh, were in, conducted in the United States. And none of the article was conducted in, in Italy, for example, or in Portugal. And uh, about the participants of these studies, we saw that almost all the articles only exclusively involves students. It could be college students, university students, or PhD students, but even alumni. So it, when they finished, after they finished all the studying course, but very few included also other voices. And the, about the target communities, uh, we saw that they were very heterogeneous, but they were pri primarily involved uh, vulnerable youth. So low-income children or at-risk adolescents and so on. And only a minor part of the studies involved also adults and older adults. And then we question if uh, this choice is based on the relevance or on the identification in the sense that students are young people and they decide to involve with young people, or if it's just a technical consequence of the curriculum since the majority of the studies are in the educational field. So that target community is more approachable than others. And the interesting part was also the, about the outcomes that 
um, the review uh, confirmed and deepened the results uh, of other studies. Um, since we found outcomes on this uh, student social justice beliefs, so students after this experience were uh, more interested in the issues of social justice and diversity. And they also were able to reflect on the perspect their perspectives on privilege. And uh, it also helped students to change their attitudes towards social justice in the sense that they were compelled to respond uh, to the pressing societal needs and all the systemic injustice motivated them to take a stance against uh, injustice. And the third outcome were, were that uh, service learning helps students to deepen their critical understanding uh, in a sense that they increase the awareness of social justice and civic responsibility, and also realized how injustice directly affect communities. And then a minority of articles, so only four articles, reported a lack of change related to social justice in the service learning experiences. So the main conclusion uh, was that most of the studies reported positive changes in students' relationship uh, with the social justice construct. Nevertheless, all the studies remarked, even those that reported positive outcomes, remarked that if the related power dynamics uh, are not taken into account in the sense that if students are not sustained and supported in reflecting of the fact, on the fact that they have privilege and that they are in a position also of power when they engage with the communities, um, service learning risk perpetuating rather than challenging uh, the oppressive social relations. And furthermore, uh, our findings uh, suggest that there is space for community psychology to thrive uh, in, this, um, in this kind of perspective and also reflection uh, since uh, it could be useful for uh, so social justice oriented service learning experiences uh, to uh, engage with more participatory research and also um, trying to triangulate all the voices instead of focusing only on one actor and trying to work towards liberation and transformation so for social change and for social justice, rather than amelioration. So to be to have a more charitable approach. I am the one with power that I that helps you. Then, then there are some limitations. Uh, so the fact that we only included uh, English articles, even if we excluded only two articles, <laughs> with the, excluding uh, Spanish. Um, that there was only in the studies were only empirical and in higher education contexts. And the fact that we decided to use service learning label, even if we know that uh, some other existing terms are, ex, uh, are used as, um, as synonyms, like community based learning. Um, some future directions uh, from this review uh, were that, as I said, studies all mainly involve students and it would be interesting and useful to include also faculties and community partners perspective. We remarked the call for rigor when doing research with service learning, so include a more structured and longitudinal mixed method perspectives and also using existing scales rather than only ad hoc creative scales uh, and share the qualitative instruments would help to um, strengthen the, the research. And also that we don't know for sure, we don't know from the, from the research, um, from, from many of the studies, how service learning impacts the communities. Only one study said that uh, 
this experience helped community members to take a stance against the oppression and the, the systemic injustice. For example, in this study, uh, in Indian rural communities where um, um, women were forced to abort when they knew that they were pregnant with a, a female fetus. Um, they, after with service learning and with the help of the reflection with the students, they realized that they had the power also to fight back. And so to give again value of female fetus and women in the community. So it would be interesting to have more of this research and investigate also how service learning can raise the awareness among the beneficiaries and not uh, and the community members and not only on the students. And again, community psychology can represent an added value for this. This is um, the paper with, uh, with the study that is already published and open access. And I thank you for your attention. Um, if you have questions that are um, curiosity about the, uh, the things that I said about the presentation, uh, maybe we can have one since we are pretty on time. Otherwise, we can postpone the, the question session at the end for all the presenters. Okay, so um, I give the floor to Cristina. That is going to introduce the Florence experience on service learning. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much uh, to Christian for inviting us uh, in uh, to join this uh, symposium and giving uh, the opportunity to present our. Uh, uh, experience with the service learning, uh, most recent experience. Uh, I will introduce in particular um, the, an experience uh, of uh, the University of Florence, uh, which I represent as a member of uh, LabCom, which is embedded in the laboratory uh, multi-setting uh, community action research from real to virtual uh, of the university itself. We um, carried out uh, an experience where the University of Florence and its students were the beneficiary uh, context of the service learning, which was carried out by uh, American students coming from uh, Gonzaga University in Florence, which is it's, it's a study abroad program uh, uh, where American comes from, uh, uh, comes in Florence and uh, follows some programs. Uh, this experience uh, was carried out uh, for uh, several years, uh, even during COVID-19, where all the activities were totally online. And uh, the main focus of such experience uh, uh, was to foster a cultural exchange among participants uh, and to support uh, a critical reflection on differences among group students. And this experience was able also to strengthen the network among university, and in particular with the foreign university as Gonzaga. Um, we are focusing now um, as LabCom on the on testing evaluation tools for service learning. Evaluation is crucial. We already said during our workshop yesterday, we know that uh, it uh, represents one of the main indicator of service learning quality, because it's able to give us the outcomes of the process of service learning, which directly arise from uh, uh, participants' voices. Literature uh, highlighted maybe 
still some uh, issues related to uh, some procedures or tools they may sometimes not be uh, totally able to assess uh, professional and personal growth uh, and also the learning part uh, that emerged from the critical reflection which is the main focus of uh, service learning uh, experiences so it appears crucial to be able to develop uh, suitable methods and tools uh, for evaluating both tangible and tangible outcomes in uh, service learning. So this contribution is addressed to the evaluation of uh, service learning experience, which was carried out uh, during uh, last academic year with the seven uh, students coming from University of Florence Psychological School, uh, which were beneficiaries of service learning, and nine uh, Gonzaga University students. All participants followed, attended uh, a three-month seminar, which was focused, uh, as I uh, previously said, um, on the um, cultural exchange, uh, starting from uh, psychological and relevant topics uh, and issues. We, uh, to evaluate, we developed uh, a pre-test and post-test survey online, uh, able to explore their satisfaction, contribution, and increase of skills in participants. We also asked participants to uh, write a journal after every meeting. And then and during the uh, data analysis, we, we also uh, analyzed uh, post-it uh, um, used uh, filled in during the uh, meetings and in group sessions. So lots of results, I'll try to be brief. Uh, starting from uh, quantitative data coming from the survey, we can see results related to interest and satisfaction of, uh, of participants. We see pretty high uh, scores, which are very close to the highest uh, score possible. However, we can see a slight decrease between the first and the final meeting, particularly for US students. Uh, we can see the median and mode are pretty high as well. Uh, and uh, we didn't detect, as you will see in the next uh, findings, uh, such degrees uh, coming from uh, other evaluation tools. So we, uh, this may suggest that uh, uh, quantitative items uh, uh, may be uh, sometimes limited in uh, uh, evaluating uh, uh, service learning experience uh, with such a small size uh, uh, sample of participants. Um, regarding open-ended questions of, uh, of the survey, uh, we focus just on the time of learning. And uh, we can see that uh, the only code that emerged in both pre-test and post-test survey and in both uh, uh, group students uh, was the cultural exchange, uh, with, which confirmed to be the main focus of, uh, of the experience, uh, able to foster critical reflection on uh, psychological uh, issues. Uh, generally, uh, in the analysis, we can see that uh, uh, in, Italians, uh, in the Italian uh, results, uh, there were more codes emerging. Uh, related, for instance, to the learning of uh, community psychology topics, uh, service learning in US, in US, and the increase of communication skills. For what concerns findings related to the analysis of journals? In this slide, we can see the first term that emerged related to the expectation towards service learning and with the um, difference of frequency among uh, Italian and US journals. You can see that this term uh, has the 8% of frequency of all tot total codes uh, emerged. We can see that US students mainly expected to meet Italian people and to build with them social relationship and also to improve their communication skills and to learn about the other culture, Italian culture. This was the same for Italian, maybe with a wider frequency also. And the Italians also um, expected to, to increase uh, their uh, competencies and knowledge. 
The second term that emerged was related to the barriers and difficulties uh, uh, encountered during the process. Uh, this was uh, with a lower uh, frequency and mainly uh, presented, um, mainly uh, emerged from the Italian journals. Uh, the main uh, code emerged was related to the language barriers, uh, the general barriers in social interaction within the group, uh, and the difficulties emerging from the expression of uh, uh, emotions and feelings, uh, which was uh, a code that emerged when they started to reflect about the impact of COVID-19 issues in their lives. Uh, According to results of final survey, uh, we can see that all participants, both Italians and Americans, uh, um, revealed that they, um, they perceived to have improved their uh, uh, relationship with each other and their communication skills. The main theme that emerged from the analysis was related to the outcomes of service learning. It emerged in all meetings, uh, journals, and in both Italian and US journals. It was uh, uh, mainly represented by the sub theme of cultural exchange. So again, the main theme of uh, the exchange within the group was uh, uh, central in this experience, uh, was related again uh, to the exchange about uh, the academic topics, the impact of COVID-19 on both cultures, and again about the expression, uh, the opportunity to express their emotion and feelings af after such experience. Um, the outcomes, of course, uh, were related to the increase of knowledge and skills, uh, Again, they, they, uh, it emerged an improvement of com communication skills, an increase of academic knowledge, and also increase of uh, skills such as uh, self-confidence and teamwork and so on. Uh, in the outcomes, it emerged, of course, uh, also a reflexivity part, which is, of course, uh, a main part of, uh, of service learning, uh, which was related to the moment where uh, uh, people reflect on the, on the topics that emerged from the discussion after the meeting and uh, um, was able to show that they have uh, an awareness uh, uh, an increase of awareness about uh, relevant topics. For instance, uh, uh, one US uh, student said that uh, was realized that uh, the important role of government uh, play, playing uh, in mental health for its citizens, which again emerged after the discussion on COVID-19. Uh, last subtem code was related to the increase of uh, uh, the improvement in social relationships. Uh, it, a very frequent uh, uh, theme, again, was uh, the positive evaluation in general of uh, the experience they were living. Uh, again, it, this theme emerged in all meetings journals from the first to the last one and uh, was mainly related to the, um, they, they mainly appreciated the opportunity to, um, to increase their skills, to overcome their, li their limitation. They, talk about, uh, oh, now I can express myself better in English. I feel confident to be able to go on Erasmus for a project and so on. And uh, of course, to learn more and with a critical uh, view on uh, uh, relevant uh, psychological topics, and of course, to be able to compare with uh, another culture. The uh, only observation which, were, which uh, they, have, they had a low frequency was uh, mainly related to the willing to want more. <laughs> Most of them said, for instance, from the Italian part, uh, I would like uh, to have more time to talk more about myself, uh, to make me, uh, to be able to, um, to know better the, uh, the other and to uh, make myself uh, a little bit, uh, uh, um, to, to talk about myself. Uh, to have more time to strengthen the bonds that were, uh, uh, they were uh, 
creating and uh, some of them also uh, would like to talk more about maybe other issues uh, or other topics because some of them uh, were more uh, to say I would like to overcome the COVID-19 issue however some of them were very grateful to be able to speak about their emotion as I uh, already said in previous uh, findings. Um, for what concerns the post-it analysis, uh, this part uh, was uh, important uh, to better understand on which keywords and uh, uh, part uh, uh, participants were more focused during the uh, group sessions and during the meetings. Again, uh, the main theme that emerged was related to a reflection about the impact of COVID-19 about uh, the increase or reducing of connection among people, feelings of frustration and loneliness, the increase of school difficulties uh, during COVID-19, the, um, the changes that occur in the look for a new, the search for a new normality after, uh, during and after the COVID-19. And another topic that was uh, explored during the, the meetings was related also to the um, perception of neighborhoods in both US and both Italy. So uh, a reflection about how this perception, how the differences affects uh, the, the lives of, uh, of students, of participants. Just to summarize, because I know I overcome a little bit the time. Um, we have uh, uh, findings reveal the positive evaluation of all participants, which mainly appreciated uh, to have learned from uh, the cultural exchange, to have learned about uh, important issues, uh, to have the opportunity to share their own emotions. They um, also uh, expected to, um, to improve their relationship and their, and their skills, and these expectations were met, and they also increased the personal skills, um, like, like self-knowledge, teamwork, and academic knowledge. And the discussion among uh, uh, ca different cultures was able to foster a deep reflection within the participants. These Contribution was also addressed to uh, have an ideas of evaluation tools and pros and cons. I try to summarize some ideas, some insights we can discuss on after. Uh, about journals, journals uh, are confirmed to be a rich tool, which, which is able to enhance the outcomes of service learning. However, is pretty time consuming for both researchers and also participants. In this experience, we had some participants which missed to provide their, uh, their journal. They were not able to do it all the times. On the other hand, the self-evaluation survey may be faster and more accessible, may be based on service learning objectives, may be based also on uh, um, scales uh, emerged from the literature, and also on the, maybe on main contents already emerging in journals from literature as well. Um, however, quantitative items may be limited, may reduce the reflexiveness of the experience of service learning, and we can think about to introduce maybe open-ended and uh, qualitative items. Post-it was really important to detect the in-progress learning and the reflexivity coming from participants' interaction, however, must be integrated, of course, with other assessing tools. So in future studies, I agree with what already Christian said, we may focus maybe on a more mixed method approach as a proper way maybe to mainly detect service learning outcomes maybe also reducing time commitment. Thank you. Thank you, for Christina, for your presentation. And I will ask Katarina to join us.
Hello, good morning, everybody. And thank you so much, Christian and Cynthia, for the invitation and, and for the work that uh, we have done together. Um, in fact, uh, this, uh, this work that I am showing um, this morning, uh, Christian, um, is is um, is part of our team uh, while he came to portugal as a visiting researcher and uh, we shared an experience um, in uh, on service learning research that i'm doing in 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 my phd in portugal and and christine that is finishing his, his phd here and we work together uh, in in some on some projects um some questions that, that um, guided us, um, uh, broader questions uh, for service learning. Uh, one uh, is uh, about community. We, we have been talking about community and, and the, the, the community impact. And the question is, how can we deepen democracy? And at this time, at this social time, it's, it's very important from the higher education institutions to think about this. How can we deepen democracy? And uh, we know that we need uh, civic participation. Uh, we need civic engagement. And uh, we also know from the literature that uh, the, 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 the lack of, of uh, uh, civic and political engagement from young people uh, can be detrimental and can be dangerous <laughs> for our society uh, while it's going to, uh, to have an impact on, on our democracy. Other question, are, are, are the youth engaged with the society? Um, um, there are uh, some, some ideas uh, that uh, nowadays young people don't don't want to to, to know about politicals and, and don't want to to be part or, or to engage uh, but in fact uh, the literature uh, also says something that is uh, young people today they are engaged and they want to make part and they, wait, they, 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 they still want to change the world, but in, in another way, uh, not in the, the hierarchical institutions, not in the formal institutions, uh, but uh, uh, in new ways of, of engaging. And, and we, we, we should attend uh, and we should uh, open our institutions to, to that uh, uh, transformation. Um, so they are not so connected to conventional democratic institutions, um, but uh, uh, they, they are working and they want to work in a, a more horizontal way. And other topic that guided us is, is about um, well-being and mental health issues. We know that we have uh, uh, a World Health uh, Organization uh, tell us uh, a lot that we, we are uh, in an emergent uh, problem with, with mental health uh, issues. Uh, and, and not only uh, with the adults, as with students, with, with young people, uh, they are facing uh, mental health issues. So, but we are studying well-being a lot and we are searching a lot about well-being and, and that's the way that, that we think that we can co-create communities where, where people uh, feel good and where people can flourish in. Uh, so, uh, literature also says through civic participation, through civic engagement, uh, we have uh, 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 more potential potential for their well-being and of course for their mental good mental health um, in fact civic engagement activities not only increase the purpose of life uh, because uh, sometimes what we feel with students is the, the lack of meaning not only with students, uh, but uh, uh, the lack of meaning. Uh, and uh, this civic engagement can create this kind of purpose. And, uh, um, and of course, provide mon moments of contact with peers. And, and that's, that's very important. Uh, so to avoid to, to become isolated. Uh, and that was the risk uh, that was increased in, in COVID-19 in pandemics. Uh, so it, it was good that the online foods uh, uh, 
could create conditions to the share experience um, and, and to create this sense of belonging um, in, in, of young people. So, and this is what we, literature, what we feel that, that are the, the, pillar, uh, the, the, the pillars of, of well being of the individuals. Higher education institutions um, uh, is uh, nowadays higher education institutions are not only to 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 pass the knowledge the academic knowledge and we have in higher education institutions also uh, that that uh, responsibility uh, of this this uh, uh, civic engagement uh, component and to create conditions that the, the students feel engaged and feel alive uh, uh, not only learning contents and, and, and um, so um, more and more we have some civic engagement activities that can be uh, like here, uh, student focused, um, like uh, service learning is one of them, uh, one of these, these, uh, these experiences, but also, and service learning integrates this, this collaboration between faculty and, uh, and communities so that uh, uh, colleges uh, becoming part and, and the, the higher education institutions becoming parts uh, uh, of, uh, of the community with open doors to the community and, 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 and co-creating this, this community where they belong. So here we have uh, service learning as a path to the to civic engagement and and is uh, uh, today one of the most commonly considered uh, uh, and and research is is uh, is increasing we can find uh, um, and, uh, and 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 is one of the the, the most commonly considered uh, to 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 increase civic engagement among students um, and here we, we, we adopt the, this, this uh, definition from Jacobi, a form of experiential education in which students engage in activities that address human and community needs together with structure opportunities to reflection. And we want to highlight this, uh, this perspective of the uh, reflection designed to achieve desired learning outcomes. Well, Christian and Christina, uh, talked about the, the multiple impact of service learning that we know from the literature, from the research, uh, among students, among faculty, among communities. Um, and we today want to, 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 to highlight this, this impact uh, on, on students uh, that, uh, that Christian and Christina also <laughs> brought uh, this morning. Uh, and we have uh, so much gains but it, it's not only about, about do um, work on community and do the good things to the community and to be the savior uh, of the, uh, the poor. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, and it's not only about to gain credits for academic credits, uh, it's more than that. It's to becoming a, a member of the community, and that it's our motive also as a research as, as researchers um, of this uh, from this approach. So uh, we, we we bring this uh, uh, to highlight what was uh, as Alvin uh, as said before uh, the reflection matters, the importance of the the, the moments of the reflection and the, the structure reflection. Um, we need these moments, we need the service component to, to, to work on community, we need uh, uh, the, the, the learning, of course, what we are learning with this, but the reflection can make the bridge and can, can make sense to this experience and can be transformative. So, um, service learning needs a moment of several moments of reflection to enrich the learning experience, teach civic responsibility and strengthen communities. Um, 
And should this reflection should allow students to make connection between the service experience and the learning? And uh, of course, um, that that uh, uh, you, you you brought <laughs> this idea that. Uh, uh, the, the poorly structured uh, service learning experience uh, can affect this process um, and, and can reinforce uh, stereotypes and fail to uncover the root causes of social inequality. We need structured experience. Uh, uh, we need to, to, to plan this experience and we, meet, we need to create these moments for, for reflection. So, uh, I, I bring uh, an experience that is made on ISPA, a uh, 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 higher education institution uh, in Portugal, Lisbon, um, that is uh, Rio de Parish, uh, that is a project that aims to, to promote civic um, uh, empowerment and involvement of women who are or have been the target of gender violence, domestic violence, discrimination and harassment through the constitution of peer support groups. Um, and uh, uh, there are several students that are engaged in this project, okay? And, and that was created in Ishba with several uh, partnerships. Um, the main activities of the students, they delineated, implemented, and evaluated research and action complete cycles, participated in, meet, in meetings with women violence survivors, planning and implement use violence awareness sessions, selected and implement violence prevention programs, participated in translation and cultural adaptation of measures, participated in seminars associated with violence preven prevention. So uh, they were uh, um, integrated in this project and uh, they, they, they work uh, um, uh, with, with, this, the, with those women. There were uh, 16 students uh, from 20 to 29, emerging adults, uh, almost female, uh, uh, identified as, as female and uh, mostly Portuguese, but we had uh, uh, some Erasmus students also, three Italian and one Spanish and one uh, German uh, student. And they had uh, in, in this, in, in ISPA, they don't have credits. Uh, uh, academic credits, but they have a diploma, a uh, uh, supplement. As a, a reflection uh, moment, uh, it was uh, created a focus group uh, uh, this year uh, that was <laughs> conducted by Christian uh, online. Uh, and uh, um, And we propose here a focus group as a structured reflection moment um, that also contribute to our uh, evaluation of the process. I don't will read the questions, but uh, some answers. Uh, tell me about the, the positive experience uh, and students uh, talked about uh, the, the impact um, and uh, it was, they, they, they felt a big impact. Uh, I found myself investigating or researching a, a lot about the violence uh, um, to see that in the real world, violence is not just the physical, made me see it from another perspective. Being able to develop stuff and materials uh, like uh, this, it, there, there was a manual that they created uh, to prevention. Um, to help the young people learn about violence and prevent it from happening and, and kind of protect themselves. It was uh, this impact of, of uh, uh, working and listening to the, the narratives uh, from, from the, 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 the violence, uh, domestic violence survivors. Um, so uh, tell me about the challenges and the challenges uh, we uh, 
talk here a lot about emotions, the, the emotions they, they, they had to, to uh, cope with, uh, because it, it was very hard for them. Um, and, and the last one, I think we were all very nervous, but we are definitely the greatest actors. So it was important, this moment of reflection to share and to talk about the, the, these emotions and the motivation uh, the, the, to, to integrate this project, to participate was, uh, of course, to change, to build, to change our community, to help. Um, to be sure that this would be something that I had the, the stomach to go in, in, to go into, so that I, I can I can handle in the future, future work on the community and um, the competences that you have learned, uh, um, prevention, empathy, and what the the the, the most important competence, prevention, experience, uh, formation, training, empathy, um, and about democracy. Um, they all talk, and I'm finishing, uh, they all talk about uh, uh, the importance of we are doing something. We are little, we are a little group, but we are starting something new uh, um, and, and helping. And we are trying to spread awareness uh, among uh, young people uh, with the prevention programs. So way to go reflectivity and moments of reflection as a pillar of service learning programs will foster active and participative citizenship as well it will contribute to youth mental health and well-being promotion by enhancing a sense of purpose and belonging this is the base of our work that we are now researching of course uh, with students with faculty and with community members and uh, we think that this moment of reflection can help also uh, to uh, transform our programs and to think about uh, in, a, in a broader way with, with students. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Katarina, for your presentation. And now we pass to the last presentation of Marisa Bergamini. Okay. Good morning. I'm the program manager of MentorUp, a mentoring program led by Professor Santinello, implemented by the Department of Developmental and Social Psychology of the University of Padova. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the kind invitation. In mentoring, a caring adult provides support, guidance, and assistance to at-risk youth via one-to-one -one relationship that fosters positive de development. Service learning is a um, pedagogical strategy for promote uh, um, civic-mindedness, sense of responsibilities, and uh, uh, the opportunity to, um, uh, to learn uh, something in the real world. MentorUp is a, a, the, um, a program of mentoring and uh, is uh, um, the theoretical approach is based on the developmental mentoring. Is implemented in Padova area, which is a territory characterized by a high rate of immigration around 17% in 2021. And uh, um, we operate in uh, primary and secondary schools and in communities for foreign minors. Mentees are aged between eight and 18 years old. And uh, our mentors are university students, mostly from psychological schools, and uh, that decide to work uh, in uh, our program for an internship or a voluntary stage. Mentors attend a mandatory training course consisting in six hours, six orientation hours, added to six hours of practical activities such as simulation or role playing before being assigned to a youth. 
And uh, each university student is carefully matched with a mentee based on self-report uh, interest uh, um, compatibility, and sometimes in similar backgrounds. Over the period of mentoring, mentoring uh, mentors are supervised every three weeks. So uh, goals of a mentor app uh, are help the mentees to reach their potential and uh, um, through the relationship, increasing positive outcomes like self-esteem, a sense of connectedness with uh, the community, with uh, significant adults, and the knowledge of the opportunities uh, of a local community. For mentors, uh, MentorUp can be considered as a service learning experience, so it promotes active citizenship and uh, enhancing mentors' uh, civic engagement. Here uh, we present the uh, uh, purpose of this work was uh, uh, to collect data uh, about the mentor profile during the period of 2011-2020, so nine years. Uh, data about a year of participation in the program, year spent as a mentor, terms of participation, um, such as a stage or um, internship or master course. We'd like to see uh, the relationship over time, uh, so duration of contact with mentee after the end of the program, so um, about uh, three, uh, for three months or for between three and six months or more than six months, more than one year. And also we, we uh, try to find the kind of, of advice given to the mentee about uh, this area, friendship, family, private life, love life, school, during the last uh, interaction. For impact uh, on mentors, uh, we evaluate the levels of civic engagement and the perceived impact of a mentor up in six areas, study, work, private life, volunteering, knowledge of Padova City, and civic engagement on the five point like Likert scale. So our uh, sample was uh, of uh, 203 um, age uh, comprised between 20 and 52 years old. Um, the gender um, was for around 80% uh, female and around 90% uh, um, from a school of psychology. About the family social economical status, mentors uh, um, was uh, assessed medium, medium might. And about education qualification, as we can see, around 50% have a master's degree. So about the mentor profile, we have seen that 62% has participated between 2017, 2020, 38 between 2011, 2016. About 19% has participated just at one edition and only 8% at two or more edition. Around 50% like free internship or stage. About the relationship over time, 36% of mentors keep in touch with the mentees after the, the end of a program. So 41 keep in touch for more than 12 uh, months and 30%, about 30% between six and 12 months. About 30% provide the mentor advice during the last interaction in these um, areas, friendship, family, private, and love life, school. About the impact of a program, mm, um, mentors uh, uh, reported that uh, uh, the program impacted on these areas, work, civic engagement, knowledge of Padova. As we can see, the, the percentage of um, the choice of three, four, five on Likert scale. In this graphic, uh, we report uh, um, the sample, um, uh, we report the mean on civic engagement scale um, relative to attitude. 5.31% um, is uh, in line with uh, other Italian studies. 
Um, concerning behavior of civic engagement, we find a mean of 3.71. Also, this is in line with other studies. So in conclusions, MentorUp seems to promote attitude to civic engagement, the knowledge of Padova City among uh, our mentors, mentors involved, and the mentoring relationship result stable over time. So we can see that, say that uh, uh, MentorUp uh, is a, a strategy capable of bringing benefit to mentors that participate in it. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And now we have 15 minutes and our discussant, Cinzia Albanese, will try to summarize all the presentations. <laughs> now, first of all, also in order to avoid uh, this difficult task, uh, my idea would be to collect questions if there are some uh, from the audience. Okay, the task is mine. <laughs> well, I think that, uh, uh, let's say, the, the different presentations were, were nicely connected uh, because uh, I think that, in a way, the, the first uh, work that was presented was also uh, challenging us because, uh, basically, um, it asked us in a way to be aware when we, let's say, use terms like uh, social justice, that uh, this can be very relevant in service learning experience, but at the same time, uh, uh, it has to be an issue that is explicitly addressed and also power dynamics have to be explicitly addressed. And I think that uh, uh, in particular, the, probably the last presentation where some dimension of the context uh, of uh, the specific experiences uh, that have been considered also in, in the matching between the mentor and the mentee um, uh, is a testifies that this kind of attention is there in the way that uh, the program uh, has been uh, implemented. Uh, again, from the, the very first uh, presentation, which of course, uh, being a, a literacy review, uh, considered um, the different approaches and the different experiences across the world, there, is, there was a, a clear call for rigor and a, a clear call for attention uh, regarding the different tools and the approach that we have uh, to uh, toward evaluation uh, because of course this uh, helps us also to see if uh, some of the benefits that uh, are claimed in the literature uh, and that are found uh, uh, sometimes but sometimes are not so clearly identified uh, are really there and I think that uh, some of the reflection that uh, have been brought also by, by Katarina are interesting in the sense that uh, we have uh, a strong focus, which it's embedded in, um, in, um, in service learning that is on uh, reflection and on civic engagement, but at the same time, uh, probably most literature has forget to consider um, the outcomes in terms of well-being because, uh, and I think this also connect to one of the results that uh, Christina was mentioning, which is probably not the most popular result, but that it's also something that happens. We also found something similar in our research. And basically, um, there are some, uh, when, especially when you use a longitudinal approach to the research, um, you can see, especially when you use uh, quantitative measures, that uh, some of, the, of your expe expe expectation in terms of what would happen 
are not exactly met in the sense that sometimes you really see that there are there is a decrease in uh, uh, measures and variables that you would have liked or expected that uh, to see um, uh, an improvement. And I think that this has to, to do with uh, the process that uh, service learning uh, set up um, because, uh, I mean, as long as we are working in order to promote awareness on what is happening and we are also challenging the students uh, because we are uh, giving them some time also the opportunity to have uh, to touch real situation to experience specific relationship this could be the case for for the mentor up program but of course also the the case for many of the experiences that uh, Katarina referred to uh, and uh, I mean what is the impact in terms of well-being I can be more engaged I can be more aware but how this is impacting me in terms of how do I feel in terms also of personal capacity empowerment and uh, and uh, I don't know sometimes students say that uh, the experience is uh, allows them to escape from their comfort zone which can be also a frustrating um, experience uh, so in a way, it could be true that uh, we need to um, use more mixed uh, method approach uh, and be more uh, attentive also to the tools that we use for evaluation. But sometimes probably we need also to, to think about the, the result in terms of the process that we are able to uh, implement and to sustain when we are doing uh, uh, service learning. Uh, I think that uh, overall the, the symposium gave us a, a nice overview uh, again of the different uh, opportunities that we can have in terms of uh, uh, implementing service learning, dealing with very different social issues, but also different ways of uh, approaching evaluation and some, uh, um, some of the suggestions that came uh, from uh, Christina's experience can also be uh, connected with the, the, the work that uh, was done, for example, uh, by Katarina and the group in the sense that uh, we can use uh, quantitative measure, we need to find, uh, we, we can use, we mostly use also reflective journals and this idea of using, I would say, quick, short method like focus group that can help us, um, um, let's say, to evaluate the process at the end, but also the idea of using post-it across the meeting, I think it's, it is really interesting and probably this could be also something that could be uh, maybe developed in, in the in the in the long run also using IT tools that maybe could be used by the students. Um, I think that uh, what uh, also has been uh, stressed uh, by Christina in this sense is that uh, uh, I, I, I do not know if this is always clear to those who are not involved in service learning, but there is a lot of energy and effort and the whole process to, to set up, to monitor and to implement, it's really time consuming because uh, it's a matter of connecting um, with partners in the local community. It's a matter of engaging students. It's a matter of designing a process that uh, meet uh, the um, expectation and um, the, the learning outcome that uh, um, we are designing and we are thinking to, to reach uh, with this kind of activity. And of course, evaluation is also 
part of what can make uh, this uh, experience relevant, but also sustainable because uh, I think this is one of the, the big challenge also to find ways to measure outcomes and assess processes in a way that is sustainable and also that allows us to uh, compare uh, the experiences and, uh, and their impact. And I think that in, in this sense, the, the, um, the work that um, has been presented by Marisa and the, the, um, the experience in uh, Mentor Up is uh, significant in the sense that uh, there is uh, an effort in terms of maintaining a systematic approach to evaluation using uh, validated tools and also having the chance to compare the experiences across time. Of course, uh, I would also be curious to know um, many other details about the different experiences because, for example, Christina mentioned some differences between uh, uh, the US and the Italian students. Uh, uh, Marisa also pointed out that uh, um, there were differences in the experiences of the of the mentors because some of them uh, uh, were there for more than uh, one experience, so they repeated their experience. Uh, uh, some uh, half of them uh, were there, let's say. Uh, for, for doing an internship or based on their own free choice. So it would be also interesting to see uh, if there are differences with, with those who uh, made this experience within a master degree program. And um, I think that this is also something that could be, could be relevant in terms also of advancing the, the research on, on service learning. Uh, well, Katharina also um, stressed, uh, and this is something that, uh, let's say, is really in, 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 in the literature and in, the, in one of the reasons for, for implementing service learning, the, the connection with civic engagement. And also, I don't know if this was, let's say, wishful thinking, or if we are able to think about service learning really as, as a tool in order to create uh, opportunities for engagement that is not only, let's say, respectful of the um, willingness of young people to be involved in a different way, but if also service learning can help us to uh, rethink the way institutions, in particular educational institution, can support uh, the democratic involvement of young people. Because uh, it is true that uh, probably most young people at the moment are finding or trying to find their own way to be engaged, but uh, we need also to find a way to uh, engage young people in uh, institutions and probably I think that um, the, the overall idea of co-creating, of connecting, of reducing uh, hierarchies that uh, is in service learning could be probably, I don't know, something helpful in this direction, but this is something that we have to see in the long run. Okay, from, from my side, it's all. And if, you, if there are comments or if not, I thank you for being here, for your participation and your attention. Thank you. I only would like to add that if there are any questions from home, because I, I can see that someone is connected. So I don't know if they have questions. I think we can ask. I, I don't know if there's still t time to answer any questions, but um, I, I was just wondering about the implement implementation. Um, I find it really difficult, like in my 
uh, my college to implement anything like, like this? Is it like an, it's in one department? It's like a combination of different departments. It's, um, it's in one specific course. That's, it's, that's really, it's really a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think that the answer is uh, it can be probably all the experiences that uh, have been presented in a way are different. Sometimes uh, these are programs that are offered to different uh, courses. Sometimes they are um, sustained by one, one department. Sometimes uh, those experiences are connected only or implemented only within a master degree program. And because uh, the, the level on, of institutionalization of service learning is very different in different university, in different contexts. So uh, there is no, no single answer. There are very different situation and uh, also with different uh, uh, support from the different institution. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know if there is another question. Probably we have just Hi. otherwise. Oh yes, um, I, 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 I thank you very much for the uh, your input, and I really appreciate. It. And my name is Yusuke Okuyama from Na National Defense Medical College of Japan, and uh, it's not a question, but uh, one comment that uh, it, what really stuck me from uh, today is that, uh, like as you say, that um, for this type of uh, field work or service learning, a participant can further oppress the community. And it's so true. And I had a I have experience as well as a participant. And I think this is a, our role. I was quite encouraged to feel that this is our uh, community psychologist's role to facilitate, to safeguard the situation and further providing learning opportunity in terms of power and privilege, like you mentioned. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you all and good continuation with the conference. <laughs>